In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the main principle behind zonal defending. I will refer to this principle as chain defending. So just to give a quick overview of zonal defending, the basic idea is that each defender is responsible for an area of space around them, not for an individual mark. This means that players move relative to the ball and their teammates, not to an individual on the, on the opposing team. One of the basic principles of zonal defending is forming defensive lines. In this example, the red team is defending in a 4-4-2 formation. Therefore, we have a defensive line with our four defenders, a midfield line with our four midfielders, and then a forward line with our two forwards. Another principle of zonal defending is keeping the space between the lines compact and easy to access for each defender. Typically, the coach will give a general rule of thumb declaring how much space should be between each line. A lot of coaches say that it should be no more than 30 meters from the defensive line to the forward line, therefore leaving about 15 meters in between each line. This of course can vary, and sometimes teams will become very compact, leaving only 10, 10 yards in between. Now that we've covered some of the basic ideas of zonal marking, let's get into the idea of chain defending. The first principle of chain defending comes from that of zonal marking in that we set our defensive lines. We try to keep these spaces in between defenders consistent. The first term I want to talk about in chain defending is that of the active defensive line. The active defending line is the defensive line that is currently engaged with the ball. If the blue team has the ball with their defender, our active defensive line is now our forward line. Our midfield and defensive lines are now, more, are now passive. In the active line, we have two types of defenders. We have the on-ball defender, or the pressure defender, and we have the cover defender, who is off the ball. One of the basic principles from this type of defending is that we want to keep as many defensive lines between the ball and the goal as possible. This means we want defenders to do their best to keep the ball in front of them and not be bypassed. So the basic role of the pressuring defender is then to apply pressure onto the ball. Depending on your team philosophy, you can tell the pressuring defender to force the ball out wide, or to try to force the ball back inside into pressure. The covering defender's role now explains why we call this chain defending. This chain that was applied between our two defenders and our forward defensive line needs to stay connected. So when one forward goes to step out to pressure the ball, this covering defender now tries to stay on the defensive line but keep the same chain intact. So this defender will now get pulled over here by the chain that connected between him and his forward teammate. So now let's look at the same example in the midfield. So if the ball becomes played into our midfield and bypasses our forward defensive line, we now need one of our midfielders to step out and become the pressuring defender. So we will say that this defender will come, step out, and apply pressure. You can see our defensive line is here, but now the chain between our two central midfielders has become longer. So this means that this midfielder must be pulled over along the defensive line. As he becomes pulled over, so does this outside midfielder to keep the connection between this midfield, the center midfielder and the outside midfielder. As this midfielder stepped out of the defensive line, this means that this midfielder also needs to tuck in. Remember that the main purpose of this defending is to prevent our, midf our lines from being bypassed by any attacks. So we are okay with the ball being played wide or backwards. We do not want anything played in the gaps in between our defensive line. This same principle applies to the last line of defense, the defensive line. If this ball gets played out wide here, we now have one defender step out to become the pressure defender off the defensive line, but now this will pull the chain between him and the left side of the central defender, and he will come across, which will then pull the chain between the two central defenders, and he will come across, and the outside defender on the opposite side will also be pulled across because of the chain between him and the number four. So now hopefully it's obvious to see that there are basically two situations that can happen in a defensive line. You can either have one of the central players step out to apply pressure, which then will require everyone to shrink in behind and close the gaps behind that defender, or we can have the outside defender have to step out and apply pressure, which then drags everyone across the line to help cover. So now we talked about how the active defensive line acts when they are the ones pressuring the ball, but what happens when you're not the active defensive line and the ball is being passed around? So let's say this defender plays the ball out wide. We now want to apply pressure to this person on the ball. 
the person who has judged themselves as the fastest player to apply pressure is this number seven on red. He steps out and applies the pressure. Accordingly, all of our players get dragged along, and if you imagine this defensive line as extended out even further, they will come all the way across to help, as was shown before. But now, what do our forward line and our defensive line do to help? Do they just stay in the same spot, or do they move with the active defensive line? As you might have guessed, they move with the active defensive line. So let's first talk about the defensive line. As this ball comes out wide, we will allow our defensive line to shift across and also help defend. Our forward line now will look to, will try to prevent passes from being made forward, but will allow anything backwards or sideways. So what this means is this pass will try to be denied by off the line here. And this number 10 now is on the opposite side of the field trying to sort of play a sweeper role almost on the opposite side of the field for any switched path, any ball that gets switched across. Say this ball gets played forward down the line. Now this outside defender will step and we will shift a little bit across to help. So now let's say a big switch pass has occurred from side to side. The red number 11 and red number 10 will decide who could get there first to apply the pressure. We'll say the number 11 is the first one to get there and now we will see the shift along the defensive line of the midfielders and the defenders who all come across to help along their defensive line. Again, this forward now will tuck in to try and prevent any gap in there, and this forward will come across and sort of play a, role, a free role trying to pick up on any loose passes. Now you may have been wondering what was the use of the extra white lines that have been drawn on the field. These markings are helpful reference points for our defenders. The middle part of the field is we will just call the middle. The outside two sections we will call the left and right wings. And then these parts in between the middle and the wings are referred to as half spaces, or you can refer to them as sidewalks. The use of these areas when teaching chain defending is to help defenders with reference points. The main reference point I use is that all our defenders should be in the same area as the ball and then the two closest areas to the ball. So let's say the ball is out on the wing. We should all be defending either out on the wing, on the right wing, we should all out, be out in the right wing area, or we should have all shifted across into the two closest areas. The two closest areas to the right wing then are the right half space and the middle of the field. What this means is we do not want any defenders lagging behind in the opposite half space or opposite wing. These gaps provide too much space to the opponent to find, some, to find space and play through our defensive lines. So another example of how we want to use these areas of the field. If a pass is then made into the middle of the field, we want our pressure to come out and for that defensive line to tuck in. And now we are covering the middle of the field and the two half spaces on either side of the middle of the field. We do not want any defenders lagging out in the wings. So now if the ball gets played to the opposite side, again, we apply our pressure our cover defenders drop onto the defensive line and shift over. Our defensive line shifts across to help. And our forward line prevents any passes in front of her, it tries to prevent any passes in front of her midfield line and then covers the middle and any switch passes. This example here is where it might become a little bit more obvious as to why we apply the area plus two rule. If this big switch comes over, we need to shift over quickly to help defend. Our midfield line needs to come all the way across. Our defensive line needs to come all the way across. And our forwards need to help in the middle. So with this midfielder now, we are in this area. We want to cover the half space next to it and the middle of the field. If this, if this outside midfielder is lagging behind, or this opposite defender is lagging behind to shift across, we now have a big gap to play through in the middle of the field. If, we then, if they then play into the middle of the field, now we know that we are shrinking into the middle of the field or into the half space or sidewalk on either side of the middle. 
So if our defensive line shifts over, if our opposite defender is lagging behind and this just has stayed out in the right wing area, we now have a big gap in between these two defenders to exploit from the opposite attack. Thank you for watching. Please leave any feedback in the comments.